today is the same forever. He heals the sick. He delivers the prayer. He breaks the bars of wickedness. He calls us under the bars of iron. Somebody shall fire. The first marriage, God intervened to take away a bad situation. Is that true? He said, it is not good, so I make it good. So in God's original program, there is no place for perennial singlehood. You are not supposed to be single all your life. In his plan, marriage is for good. It is meant to be enjoyed, not to be endured. Come on, are you with me? In God's eternal calculation, confusion and crisis is not part of marital equation. Barrenness and poverty is an assault on marriage. And the master plan of marriage doesn't include divorce and separation. So anything that wasn't part of the original, you know in Matthew chapter 19, from verse 3 to 8, they were asking Jesus questions about marriage. He told them the man that created, the one that created them in the beginning, made them male and female and said they should come together and become one flesh. He said, therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put us on that. Then they asked him, why is there so much crisis in marriage? He said, in the beginning, it wasn't so. So, something that wasn't part of the original plan entered. Lift up your hand. Anything that's not part of God's plan for your life that sneaked in, I pick it out. Amen. From today, let there be joy in your relationship. Amen. When I hear your amen, take your portion. Amen. So, this marriage intervention series has three objectives. The first one, to release covenant marriages. The second one, to break evil hands in marriages. And the third one, to command the blessings that go with marriage. Can you lift up your hand and say, God is my matchmaker? God. If you are with me, say yes. yes. You see, we are dealing with I don't understand dating and caution. Remember in the Bible, the beginning of Samson's journey to hell is a lack of understanding of dating and caution. In Judges chapter 14, from verse 1 to 2, 13 of Judges, you see where the anointing is moving Samson. He's a mighty man. Chapter 14 begins. He says, Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up. He has not talked to the woman. He doesn't know where she is from. He has no relationship with her. There's no dating. There's no courtship. He came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me, for wife. He has married though. You didn't hear me. From that day, every news about Samson began to go down until he ended in shame. You saw his life spiraling out of control. He went into that lady. They came for the wedding. At the end of the day, things were messed up. The wedding scattered. He left without finishing the payment of the diary. His best man married the girl. Later, he got himself back. Out of the annoyance, he left on the day of the traditional wedding. He came back again to finish the something and found out that the gear has been given to the best man. Got angry and went and burnt all the farms of the Philistines. His battle with them began. And from that battle ended his life. No, you're not with me. And the emotional trauma that followed the betrayal of the woman he loved marrying somebody else. You never saw him again talking about marriage. All you saw him was going from one her lot 
until he got to Delilah. One journey of dating and courtship that went wrong destroyed the giant. Lift up your hand. I speak over you now. Every mess Satan has planned is cut off. What is dating and courtship? A date is an appointment to meet and relate. A date is simply an appointment. Let's sit here and talk. That's a date. It's not a sin. It's not wrong. It's not unchristianly. Did you hear me? Uh, did you hear me? It's not unchristianly. You can ask somebody, can I see you? I want to talk to you. There's something I want to, you want to get to know the person. But if you do that with an intention of sin, that's when you run into trouble. We don't date people for dating sake. We date people because we want to build relationships. Come on, are you here? If you help me, say yes. It's not a sin. And many Christians think it's a sin. The problem is that some people say, let us meet in my house. I want to come to your house. That's not a date. That's an appointment for sex. And by the time you take that journey, you end up in a mess. You say, I went there and the man raped me. I thought he was a Christian. Why did you go to his house alone? Are you crazy? Somebody who didn't know. He said, come to my house. And you went there. He said, I don't know what happened. I don't even know when I yielded. Excuse me. You are in the wrong territory. The atmosphere is a demonic atmosphere. Why won't you yield? Lift up your hand. I speak over you now that you won't make a mistake. Now, courtship is the regular fellowship and closeness that lays the foundation for a marriage. So, dating begins... Come on, are you with me? Dating begins a relationship. But when you have made up your mind, this is the person I want to marry, then courtship takes it. Are you with me? That's why you don't hang around somebody say you are dating somebody for one year. You don't hang around somebody say I'm dating somebody for three years. He has not said anything. He has not decided whether to marry you. You are still testing the water for three years. That's not courtship. That is what about. Are you hearing me? Courtship begins after somebody says you are the person I want. Any other thing is just friendship. That's why some young girls get so angry, very violent. He said, I dated this man for seven years and now he has married somebody else. In seven years, he never proposed to you. You were not cutting him. You were sleeping around and he had free sex. He said, I was out. I, I don't understand. Pastor, this thing must not end like this. This thing must not end. He didn't begin even. There was no beginning. You just gave yourself to a man who has not said anything. When you go on a date at your age, now you are 20-something. You are not a tata. You are not looking for a boyfriend. You are looking for a relationship that will last a lifetime. When you go out on a date and again and again and again, somebody should be able to decide, do I want to continue this thing? Come on, are you with me? If you don't continue, stop it and move on so that the wrong person doesn't occupy your space and others will give you a chance. Thinking that you have something going on and you have nothing going on. Can I talk to somebody here today? Dating opens a relationship, the door for the relationship to begin. Courtship has intending partners to lay the foundation for marital success. My God, are we going to finish this? Are you hearing me well? Even if you are married, listen to me. Your ability to counsel younger ones is evidence of maturity. If you have a young man that is married, if you here now, since you grew up in this church or anywhere, no young man has ever come to you before and said, listen, I'm making a plan for my life. Can you advise me? That nobody honors you enough to come to you and say, give me counsel. At your age, at your level, at your education, in maturity in life, nobody considers you worthy of listening to your wisdom. Hey, Bro, I won't be you. Why can't I be a leader? Why can't people take bearing from me? People don't know. No young girl has ever sat down with you and said, Sister, I like you. Can you mentor me? Can you show me how to get this thing done? How did you do your own? Even if you're married as an unbeliever, what do you know that can help me go this journey? I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to ruin my life. That's how to be a, a leader.
know the problem with people who don't understand the thing and courtship? They overstep and they run into trouble. And when you fail in dating and courtship, you can terminate a divine relationship with carelessness. The relationship is divine, no? You started something with somebody that should walk out. And then it's terminated out of carelessness because you don't understand what to do. So you mess it up. There are some young girls now who have lost the real person God sent to them. And the person is married to somebody else now and is fighting in his marriage because they messed up in dating and courtship. They couldn't discern that this is the right person. They quarreled and fought and broke up, not knowing this is my destiny I'm breaking away from. Am I talking to somebody here today? You need to understand this. And when you mess up or mismanage your dating and courtship, you can inaugurate your marriage on the foundation of dishonor and divine judgment. He said, marriage is honorable. The bed should not be defiled. So when you mismanage your dating and courtship, he said, warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. You inaugurate your marriage with judgment and dishonor. Lift your right hand. Mercy. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. Let me give you three reasons people fail in dating and courtship. The first one is... They have no pre-made decisions and clear boundaries. They have not made decisions on the kind of standard they want to set for their life. Personal standards help men to stand. Are you with me? A person who cannot stand for anything will fall for everything. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, And Daniel proposed in his heart, I won't define myself. Hello? If you help me, say yes. The reason you are afraid of people hanging around you is because you have already felt in your heart that you are an easy prey. You just know that you can easily give in. Please look up here. Pre-decide. Can you touch your neighbor and say pre-decide? Pre Decide. Decide. I will not take a journey into my marital home on the bed that is defiled. Decide it. Decide it now. If you messed up before today, as you pray now, ask for mercy and close that door. I will not enter my marital home with judgment on my head. Decide it and close that door. Close that chapter permanently. You don't know tomorrow. You are not wiser than God. Smash that door. Bind it. Take chain. Lock it. He said, I've messed up before. I've done wrong before. But this thing called marriage, I will not enter it in dishonor. Why? It may last for 30 years. It may last for 40 years. It may last for 50 years. I don't want to enter this and not trust that God is here with me. Can I talk to you? Pre-decide on that. Tell your neighbor, pre-decide. Pre That's why people run into trouble. You are going on a date with somebody and you've already made up your mind. There's nothing about this that's going to lead to sex. Nothing. There's nothing about this that's going to lead to sex. Nothing about it. Nothing about. And the first suggestion that is leading to sex, you're out of the door. Nothing about. It. That pre-decision saves you. You know why? When you, are you still with me? Uh, are you here? If you don't make that, when the pressure comes, your mind becomes jumbled up. And emotion doesn't have sense. Emotion doesn't have sense. Emotion doesn't have sense. The moment emotion is jumbled up, everything you knew flies out of the door. You only begin to regret and repent when you are in a mess. So, pre-decide. Number two. The second reason people run into a mess in dating and courtship, they neglect or negate the spiritual and structural preparation for their future. They neglect or negate the spiritual and structural foundation for their future. When you are in courtship, you are laying a spiritual and a structural foundation 
for your future. But a lot of people don't know it. All they do in courtship is, I love you, I love you. They go out and eat together. Then they sleep together. And they talk about, when are we wedding? Oh, wait now, wait now. The time is coming. And they move around. All they're doing is looking at each other and saying how much they love each other. There is no preparation. Spiritual preparation. There's no structural preparation. You're not with me. If you're here, say yes. What is a spiritual and structural preparation? What do you mean by that pastor? Listen to me. You want to be praying together when you get married. Okay, start it now. Start it with both of us pray on Wednesday or both of us pray on Thursday. Can we meet in the church by so and so time? Don't meet in your individual houses. If you do that in individual houses, you end up on the bed. You don't do that because prayer builds a spiritual tie. The more you pray with someone, the more you love the person. Are you with me? It's very important you know that. That's why we say the family that prays together stays together. Pray your abuse a spiritual tie. If you go to a church where people pray together, more often with their pastor, you discover that their affinity with their man of God increases and in churches where people just do things and go. Am I talking to somebody here too? Because prayer abuse a spiritual affinity. Can I hear you? Uh, can I hear you? Okay, so don't do that. So you take a place, you pray. Once in a week, we fast together and we pray. If it's out of town, pray on the phone, even if it's five minutes. Let it be that both of you have started laying the foundation of praying together. Find a book. Never enter into marriage with somebody who works on assumption. Read a quality book. Listen, people that are orthodox in their thinking believe that they know everything. And a man who knows too much to learn more is a difficult man to live with. Women, please be careful of any man who knows everything he needs to know in life. You can't handle that man. He doesn't learn new things. He doesn't get any new wisdom. He believes he knows how to live with a woman. Can we pick a book and read? No. No. What you do? Buy books. You, the same book. Take your copy. I take my copy. We read chapter 1 together. When we meet together to pray, we discuss it and then pray on that. We read chapter 2 next week. We discuss it and pray on that. You are building, you are thinking, you are reorienting yourself before making decisions for your marriage. Are you with me? Uh, are you hearing me? I'm not telling you what we didn't do. Did we do it? Week by week by week by week. So it's not just good preaching. It's practice that helps your home. I'm not perfect. But I've had a good home for the last 18 years. Because there were foundations that were laid that is keeping my marriage till tomorrow. It doesn't matter how much demons are in this world. My marriage can break. Can I talk to somebody here today? I don't care how many demons. If she goes, I go and get her back. Come, am I talking to somebody here today? No discussion. People talk about third party and somebody came in and stole the heart of a man. Try it now. I did. Am I talking to somebody here today? Come try. Can't happen. Why? The foundation that protects you. Can you, if you hear me say yes? So you learn, you pray over issues, you pray over your tomorrow, you prophesy over that. In the midst of that, you discuss how to handle your finances. You discuss how many children to have. You discuss how to handle in-laws. You discuss, because everything you are reading in the books is pointing out possible challenges that will emerge in your marriage. And you are discussing it before you enter the marriage. That your decisions are made before problems arise. That's how to have a home without quarrel for years. Because the decisions that are arising, you already made them before you started. Can I talk to you? There's nothing you are saying that's new. But you didn't do that. All you did is plan a wedding. A wedding and marriage are not the same. A wedding is one day. Marriage is the rest of your, rest of your life. So you just, I love you. I love you. When are we wedding? You come to the altar. We pay dowry. Pastor, wed us. We put you here and wed you. And you get back home. You start at each other. You get confused. What do we say now? You're nothing. You didn't hear me. Lift up your hand. Grace and more grace. So everywhere you see people and they say their marriage is working, it's not because they're smart. 
It's not because they're very prayerful. It's not because they're too holy. It's not because everything is there. It's because they let structural foundations. Amen. How do you manage money? What if your wife is any more than you? What have you discussed about that? What about sex? If you are caught, you must discuss sex. You must discuss what you like and what you don't like. You are 20 something now. You know everything about marriage. You can't go for counseling. The young man knows everything. Are, is it, are they the people that cross me on the road? Don't I know what I want out of life? I beg. Let them talk what they're talking. My own marriage, you will see. I will show them that all of these things, it doesn't matter. It's just to get the right person. It's not to get the right, it's to be the right person. You want to say, yes. Gateway International Church invites you to our special weekly program. Faith Clinic every Thursday, 9 a.m. to midday, featuring healing, deliverance, and spectacular miracles. Ministering in partnership with the Holy Spirit, Pastor George Izuma at the Church Auditorium. Gateway International Church, 3032 Elion Panamoro of Ada George, Mile 4, Port Harcourt. Plan to attend this clinic where Jesus is the Supreme Physician. For more information, call 0803-067-5153 or visit www.dicfamily.org. Come, Jesus exceeds experience. Expectations. The third reason, are you with me? The third reason why people mess up in quality relationships is they overcommit too quickly and destroy their capacity to discern. They overcommit too quickly. In a dating relationship that has not matured into a courtship, they started sleeping together. Even though they claim to be born again, they overcommit too quickly destroy their capacity to discern. Soul ties blind the mind. That was what happened to Samson. Everything I've told you now happened in the case of Samson. That's what happened to Samson. Samson got involved in the case of a soul tie. And ended up in a mess with Delilah. If you are here, say yes. Hello? You know, they, they had an experiment. Very funny experiment. That's the experiment of how Thompson died. Let me explain to you the experiment. This scientist wanted to know the reaction of a, a frog to changing temperature. They got water put in a pot and said boiling it to boiling point. The water is boiling. They got this frog and threw into the water. The moment the frog hit the hot water, bam, he jumped out. Why? The water was hot. You know what they did? They took a frog and put in cold water and took the water and put in on top of a bonsam burner. The fire is burning and they made it to burn gradually. They noticed that this frog stayed there. As the heat is changing, it's adjusting. It didn't jump out. The one that was thrown into the fire, boiling something, jumped out. This one was just adjusting, adjusting until it was boiled alive. That's what happened to Samson. When a man becomes confused, he keeps adjusting to sin, adjusting to rubbish, adjusting. The man is beating her, she's adjusting. The man is slapping her, she's adjusting. The man is cheating on her, she's adjusting. Everything because emotional blindness and overcommitment has put you in a mess. You are just adjusting, adjusting until you adjust to the altar. And they will pronounce you one. And it's called wedlock. They wed you and lock you. 
and you can't go anywhere again. Are you, are you hearing me? You can't go anywhere again. And suddenly, you get back up. He said, Pastor, I don't understand. The man, they drink too much. The man, they beat me. The man, they force you women. I don't know what is happening. You saw them, but you refused to notice. It wasn't happening. It's not a new thing. It started then. He used to challenge you. I'm going to slap you now. I'm going to kick you now. Get out of this. The relationship is over. And you go and beg again. The man that shouted this relationship is over. And you are begging now before you're married. We drive you from the marriage. And you have to call your parents to come and beg. There's no respect for you. But you keep adjusting until you get there. And then it becomes, hey, yeah. Lift up your right hand. I declare over you now. Anywhere you missed it, the Lord recovers you. Amen. Can I hear amen like thunder? Amen. How do I succeed in dating and courtship? Well, we can look at a biblical case study. Let's look at the case of Ruth and Boaz. Ruth chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 10. But I'm going to read in another translation, the contemporary English Bible. So, please, can you look up here and listen? He said, Boaz replied, The Lord bless you. This shows how truly loyal you are to your family. He was talking to Ruth. You could have looked for a younger man, either richer or poor, but you didn't. Don't worry. I will do what you have asked. You are respected by everyone in town. This is a man talking to a lady. He said, you are loyal to your family. You are respected by everyone. He said, you are the kind of woman. You didn't choose me for my money or choose me for my age. He said, you are a good woman. Now look at verse 12. It's true that I'm one of the relationships he's supposed to take care of you. But there is someone who is an is even closer relative. Stay here until morning. Then I will find that if he will, is willing to look after you. If he isn't, I promise by the living God to do it myself. Now go back to sleep until morning. Ruth laid down again. But she got up before daylight because Boaz did not want anyone to know she had been there. Then he told her to spread out her cape. And he filled with grain and placed it on her shoulder. When Ruth got back to town, Naomi asked her what has happened. And Ruth told her everything. She also said, Boaz gave me this grain. Because he didn't want me to come back without something for you. Naomi replied, just be patient. And don't worry about what will happen. He won't rest until everything is settled today. I don't care how bad your situation looks now. There's a husband for you. There's a wife for you. I can't hear your amen. And maybe your own is not marriage, it's in relation, it's in business, in career, in any way. No matter how bad the relationship is, trust God. No matter how bad the situation is, do what? Trust God. Trust God.